Hi, I just wanted to have a chance to talk to you a little bit about friction since sometimes people have a little bit of trouble understanding that. More specifically, probably the difference between static friction and kinetic friction. Uh, in your textbook, by the way, they will talk usually about uh, kinetic friction as being sliding friction because kinetic does mean something's moving, right? So they've got to be sliding past each other. Kinetic friction, sliding friction. That's where they've got those two put together as one. It means exactly the same thing. Keep it separate in your head though from static friction. Now what I want you to try to imagine is if you've ever had like a really big box, I'm thinking probably something the size of maybe a, a fridge or something like that, maybe a little bit smaller, but something that came in a really big box, maybe a computer monitor. Hey, there's a good idea since you're on the computer right now. Um, imagine taking that box and you had to push it across the floor. Now you probably noticed that when you were first trying to push it, it really didn't seem to want to move at all. And you had to push harder and harder and harder. And then suddenly it was like pop. And suddenly it was a lot easier for you to move it. And it was just kind of sliding along. Once you had it moving, you weren't pushing as hard. And it was just kind of sliding along on its own, not too badly. What you were seeing was the difference between static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction is always greater. It's when the two surfaces aren't moving relative to each other and it's a lot of friction. So you were pushing really hard just to overcome that static friction. As soon as you actually overcame the static friction, the applied force that you were exerting was more than the static friction, then the box started to move. Now the instant it started to move, static friction was gone, now it was kinetic friction. And so since kinetic friction is a smaller value, your applied force was probably quite a bit bigger than the kinetic friction and it was moving along quite easily. Keep in mind that if you were pushing the box and it's moving at a constant speed, a constant velocity, that means that whatever force you are exerting, your applied force, must be equal to the kinetic friction. Because with that much of you pushing, let's say 20 newtons pushing applied force, and kinetic friction, 20 newtons in the opposite direction, because friction will always be opposite, 20 and 20, zero. Zero net force does not mean that something is stopped. Instead, what it means to you is that the object is either at rest and will stay at rest, or, in this case, in motion and staying in motion at a constant velocity without any acceleration. When you're doing the calculations for these sorts of problems, please keep in mind that usually you're going to start off by calculating Fg. You're probably going to know something about the mass. You know gravity is 9.81. So you'll go ahead and you'll calculate Fg equals Mg. Now once you have this Fg, the part that you have to remember is as long as you're on a flat level surface, Fg and Fn are exactly equal. You have uh, something that's sitting on a tabletop and you've got Fg pointing down. Fn will be just as much force pointing straight up. Those two will balance each other up. Once you have Fn, then you look at the formula that you have for frictional force. Ff equals mu Fn. You'll use that value as the uh, Fn, the normal force, not net force. This just means 90 degrees to the surface that you're on. Um, you go through the calculation, you get your frictional force, and then you're good to go. If you are doing a question where it says to you something along the lines of, uh, I pushed with this much force, is it moving yet? Remember that you'll first be calculating the static friction with the coefficient of friction for static. Okay? Once you have that frictional force, static frictional force, you'll always look at the number you've got and you'll say, well, friction can go as high as whatever number you've calculated for friction. You'll say, well, did that person push hard enough yet? No, didn't push hard enough. Well, if they didn't push hard enough, the object's not moving. Once they go beyond that static friction, whatever number you've calculated, then you recalculate for kinetic friction because now they've got it moving. If you have any questions about friction, please feel free to email me and I'll try to help you out. Bye-bye.